The rules for adding and subtracting algebraic fractions are the same as for ordinary fractions, so we'll just start with a couple of examples of those. One half plus two thirds here, well we want to put the fractions over a common denominator, and one way to get a common denominator is to just multiply the denominators of the two fractions we've got, so here two times three is six, that'll do. Multiplying the left one top and bottom by three gives three sixths, and the right one top and bottom by two gives four sixths, so uh, then we just add the two uh, top values together to give seven and leave the bottom one as it is and that's six, so we'll just do, be doing exactly the same thing for algebraic fractions. And we should note that it's something like this example, three ninths minus five twelfths, the common denominator that we want, well we could do nine times twelve is 108, but actually if we use the lowest common multiple of nine and twelve instead, which is uh, the smallest number that is a multiple of both of those numbers, so here that's 36, because nine is four times 36 and twelve is three times 36, that will keep the calculations a bit simpler. So um, doing 4 times uh, top and bottom of this fraction gives us 12 36 and 3 times top and bottom of this one is 15 36 so we get minus 12 minus 15 is minus 3 so that's minus 3 36 and that simplifies down to minus 1 twelfth um, and you could have noticed as well that 3 ninths is just 1 third uh, and so we could have just done 1 third minus 5 twelfths and that would have been um, 4 twelfths minus 5 twelfths, which is minus 1 twelfth. And it does save you time if you can spot things like that before you start a question, rather than just going through a routine of doing the operations and then simplifying it down um, at the end. And uh, certainly not using just 9 times 12 makes things a lot easier in terms of the calculations. And when there's algebra involved, that's even more important because um, algebraic manipulation can get a bit uh, messy and difficult, so we want to avoid any unnecessary uh, manipulation uh, if we can. So we'll bear that in mind as we do some examples now with uh, al algebra. So the first one here, or the first two, are, s are simple because they still only have numbers in the denominator. So the common denominators are still going to be numerical. Here it's going to be 6 again, so I'll get um, 3x over 6 plus 2x over 6, and that will give me uh, 5x over 6, following exactly the same procedure as for uh, ordinary fractions. We've just got some x's around there. Similarly here, 6 and 8, we're not going to use 6 times h as the common denominator. We'll use the lowest common multiple, which is 24. So I'll multiply top and bottom of the left-hand fraction by 3, and it's really important now we put the x plus 2 in brackets because we're multiplying the whole of the numerator by 3, not just um, uh, the, the x, which is what we'd do if we'd written 3x plus 2 without the brackets. So we need brackets there over 24, and the whole of the right-hand one by 4, so that's 4 times x minus 4 uh, over 24. And we'll combine those into a single fraction by just adding or here subtracting the numerators. So we've got 3x plus 2 minus 4x minus 4, all divided by 24. And now um, we will multiply out the brackets and uh, see, if, see if it simplifies down at all. So we've got 3x plus 6 minus 4x, and be careful with the two minuses here, we get plus 16 all over 24, and that's equal then to uh, combining the terms together. We've got 6 plus 16 is 22, and 3x minus 4x it gives us a min just minus 1x, so it's 22 minus x over 24, uh, and that's our final answer. Slightly harder ones then, we're going to have now some examples where there are algebraic terms in the denominator as well, so we've got an x and a y in the denominator here, so my common denominator is just going to have to be x times y, there's nothing that we can do more simply than that, so uh, it's going to be something over x times y plus something over x times y. In this one we see we've might had to multiply the denominator by y, so we'll multiply the numerator by y as well to get 3y, and in this one we've multiplied the denominator by x, so we'll need to multiply the numerator by x to get 2x, and putting these together then, I'll write that as 2x plus 3y, uh, all divided by x times y. You could have had 3y plus 2x if you wanted to, although the convention is we uh, write these sort of terms in uh, alphabetical order usually, but it doesn't make any difference mathematically. Next one, 3 plus 1 over 5x. This confuses people sometimes because they say, oh, well, the left one isn't, uh, isn't a fraction, but um, 
uh, we can think of it as a fraction if you want to, 3 over 1, or we can just say, well, we need to, we still need to get it over a denominator of 5x. So actually, what would 3 be over a denominator of 5x? Well, uh, 3 times 5x is 15x, so this would simplify down to 3. So uh, we can turn it into a fraction like that. So we've got 15x over 5x plus uh, 1 over 5x, and then combining the numerators, we get 15x plus 1 over 5x, and that's that. Um, next one then, subtraction of these two fractions. When we've got algebraic uh, factors like this, again, we can find a common denominator by just multiplying them together, and we're going to be thinking of these as being uh, in brackets. So, um, so the common denominator we're going to have is x plus 3 times x plus 2. So to get that with the left-hand fraction, I've had to multiply the denominator by x plus 2, so I'm going to multiply the numerator by x plus 2 as well. And the same for the right hand uh, one, over a denominator of x plus 3 times x plus 2, I've had to multiply the denominator by x plus 3, so I'll also multiply the numerator by uh, x plus 3, then I'll multiply, uh, actually let's do these two steps at once, I'm going to do the subtraction and multiply out all at once here, so I'm going to get 2x plus 4 minus x squared and be careful here because it's minus uh, 3x. Um, again, a common mistake people make because actually this we're thinking of this whole sort of top of the numerator in brackets here, so it's minus this whole thing, so it's uh, x squared minus 3x here, all over x plus 3 times x plus 2, and then we've got um, uh, to just combine the 2x and the minus 3x into minus x, so we've got 4 minus x minus x squared over x plus 3 times x plus 2, and that's that. So, next example. Um, here, if we were to just multiply the enumerate the denominators of each of the fractions together, we would get x plus 3 cubed, um, but that would be overcomplicating things because we've got a lower, uh, common fact, uh, a, a, lower, a lower common multiple than that, which is just x plus 3 squared. Um, so if I multiplied the left-hand fraction just top and bottom by x plus 3, we would get x, x plus 3 divided by x plus 3 squared, and then we don't need to do anything to the next one, we just have 9 plus 3x over x plus 3 squared. Whereas if I'd just multiply them together, we'd end up with a much more complicated situation. Again, we really want to avoid that um, uh, when we're dealing with algebra. So. Now we just combine these together, and again I'll multiply that at the same time, so we get x squared plus 3x plus 9 plus 3x, all divided by x plus 3 squared, and that gives us x squared plus 6x plus 9, all divided by x plus 3 squared. Now if we can, we want to simplify down this fraction, uh, so we need to see if the numerator factorizes, uh, and actually yes it does, x squared plus 6x plus 9 is x plus 3 squared. So this one has turned out to be x plus 3 squared divided by x plus 3 squared. So we can cancel that top and bottom and uh, we've got 1. So actually you can check uh, any value of x you put into this really complicated expression over here uh, you will always get 1. The only exception to that being uh, minus 3 because if you put minus 3 into this fraction it wouldn't make sense. You'd have minus 3 over 0 and you'd also have something divided by 0 here. But anything else you put it in you would get 1. Okay, another example like that then. Um, well, here, we've got x squared minus 2x and x minus 2. And if you factorise x squared minus 2x, you see that it's x times x minus 2. So we can use that as a common denominator here, uh, rather than having to multiply these two things together, because we've got that factor of x minus 2 here as well. So this is 3 over x times x minus 2, and this is uh, 2x over x x times x minus 2, multiplying top and bottom by x, and combining those together then we get 3 plus 2x over x times x minus 2. So if you've ever got a quadratic factor in the uh, denominator that's not already factorised, then factorising it will give you a clue as to whether you can find an easier common denominator first. So if we've got a quadratic in an algebraic fraction, we're always going to uh, start by factorising it. Okay, So we'll take that uh, and apply it here, we've got two fractions here, both got quadratics in the denominators, so we'll just start by factorising them, because 
it may make it a lot easier. If we multiply these two together, that's going to be um, a pretty complicated thing. So actually, uh, x squared minus 1 is a difference of two squares. It's x plus 1 times x minus 1. And in the second one here, this is x minus 1 squared. So that's x minus 1 times x minus 1. And what we see now is there's a common factor here of x minus 1 already. So um, we can actually put this over a common denominator of x minus 1 times x minus 1, because we need two factors of x minus 1 for this one, and uh, x plus 1 here. So what we'll get then is, so we'll have x plus 1, x minus 1, and another factor of x minus 1. So I've multiplied the denominator by x minus 1, so I'll multiply the numerator by x minus 1. And then the other one here, well, we need to multiply it by the uh, x plus 1, and we've done that for the numerator, the denominator, so we'll do that for the numerator as well, putting that in brackets, and then combining these two fractions together, then we get x minus 1 plus 2x plus 2, just multiplying out this bracket here, all over x plus 1, x minus 1, x minus 1, if you wanted to write that as x minus 1 squared, uh, you could do, so we've got x plus 2x is 3x, plus 2 minus 1, so plus 1, 3x plus 1 over x plus 1 times x minus 1 squared. All the same rules apply if we've got three fractions. Um, I just need to find a common denominator that works for all three fractions. And uh, sometimes we just need to uh, use the product of all three here. There's going to be no common factors. So I'm going to have to just put everything over a factor of x plus 1 times x plus 3 times x plus 8, which is going to be um, involve quite a bit of algebra here. But uh, let's do that. So this first one, uh, I've had to multiply the denominator by x plus 3 and x plus 8. So I'll do that for the numerator as well. Similarly for the second one, uh, the one here. So put that all over the denominator like this. Um, I've already had the x plus 3 factor, so this time we want x plus 1 times x plus 8. And for the final one, uh, we can see we've already got the factor of x plus 8, so we'll have x plus 1 times x plus 3 on the top. And now what we need to do is to add the, all these together, multiply them out, uh, add all the terms together and see what we've got, see if there are any factors of x plus 1, x plus 3 or x plus 8 in there that we might be able to cancel. Uh, but I'll leave that uh, for you to do. Um, I just wanted to show you that it doesn't in principle make any difference that you've got three factors. You've got a lot of algebra to do here that would take some time, but we won't, uh, so we won't finish that example. Um, same principle applies as well of looking for uh, easier common denominators if we can. So, uh, we, and we do that by factorizing any terms that are, that are more complex. So we've got one over x minus one minus one over x plus one, and this is nice because we realize that x squared minus one is the difference of two squares. So that's x plus one times x minus one. Uh, so we can use this actually as the common denominator because both of these factors. Uh, appear in here. So I can just multiply top and bottom of this one by uh, x plus 1 to get x plus 1 over x minus 1 plus x plus 1. This one top and bottom by x minus 1 over x minus 1 x plus 1. And this one is fine as it is. Um, so combining all of those together we get x plus 1 minus x minus 1 being remembering to put brackets in here. If you forget that sort of thing, just put terms uh, in brackets, in fractions like that, it only takes a second. And minus 1 all over x minus 1 times x plus 1. And then simplifying this down, we've got x minus x, so the x is going to cancel here. But plus 1 minus minus 1, so that's plus 1. Uh, and minus 1, so that will just simplify to 1 over x minus 1 times uh, x plus 1. So that one simplified down quite neatly. So quite a lot of content in this video, loads of different examples. Essentially the rules are the same for as for ordinary fractions, but it's even more important to make sure we look for the lowest common multiple uh, of fractions before we work with them to avoid uh, overly difficult algebraic manipulation.